Good morning, everyone. It's Friday. Um, I'm not sure why I did jazz hands, but I did. Anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as you could tell, <clears throat> I'm still not 100% fully recovered, but I feel a lot better. Um, I still have coughing sprees once in a while. Is that what you call it? Coughing sprees, coughing attacks. But um, I think I'm doing a lot better. Sorry for the odd lighting. It's very gloomy outside, but I'm happy to be back. Um, you know, just, just uh, you know, warning. You may see me have a cough attack here. Because again, I'm not 100% feeling better, but I'm definitely better. <coughs> there you go. So today I'm going to talk about uh, four ways to make passive income in your handmade business. You might say, what? That's what? Because our handmade business requires us to not be passive, right? Because we're making items physically. So there's not really anything passive about it. However, um, I encourage you to listen up because because you're going to see some you're going to see a couple strategies that you could definitely implement. Hold on. <laughs> okay. That you can definitely implement and I urge you to keep an open mind because if indeed you don't like three of the items that I give you, at least a fourth one, you're going to have to. I know that sounds like you better like my strategies. No, you're going to see that you're going to have to implement these to actually stay in a good business for yourself. Um, what I'm trying to say is that if you were, if, if all of your, if all the ways you made income, okay, was completely active, not passive, very, very active, you'd you'd burn out. Your business would burn out. It's not sustainable. Okay. Now, if you're asking, I'm wondering what I'm talking about. Um, look, you'll, you'll find out in just a moment. And actually that last tip I have for you, um, is going to really go over that. Good morning. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, it's a little gloomy today. It's raining, which is kind of sucks, but, um, We'll take it. Again, I'm glad to be back, feeling a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna, in just a moment, gonna go over the four ways to make passive income in your handmade business. By the way, if you're listening to this and go, yes, I'm interested. Obviously, if you're on this call, you're probably interested. Don't forget that, you know, one of these ways, you may, it may not work for you, and that's okay. Uh, two of these ways may not work for you. Even three of these ways are like, for you, you might be like, nope, no interest, and that's okay. You decide which ones you have interest in. However, I, I created this Facebook Live with at least one tip. And again, I'm not going to force you to do anything, but you must take and actually implement, meaning it's actually for the best for you. It's the best for your business. It's like mother knows best, you know? Um, and that's what I am. I'm your business mom. I want to tell you that you have to implement at least one of these, particularly, I think, the last one, um, because... It's just smart. It's just smart business. Okay. Good morning. So I'm drinking my iced coffee. I'm drinking my iced coffee in a mug with a straw. What's going on today? Well, that's, I, I think that's a lot of days actually. All right. Let me get started. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry. Again, if you just joined, I'm not 100% better, but I'm definitely feeling better. We're going to go over four ways to make passive income in your handmade business. Listen up. Tip number one, first way, okay, is an obvious way for most people. And, and again, listen up. Continue listening because you may say, well, die, that doesn't really work for me. Pass. And that's okay. I'll go to tip number two. But just listen up for those of you who actually care about this first one. The first way is a printable or downloadable business. Okay, now it doesn't mean that you could completely let go of what you're currently doing. You can either open a second shop or make it work within your current shop, okay? So first, um, th the first thing you need to know about a printable and down downloadable business, whether you want it to be com completely DIY, meaning the customer takes care of it on their end after they download it, whatever that means, if they have to do any changes to it, if it's editable version, if it's just a print and, you know, if it's like a, just a download and print, you know, you have to consider that because some people's um, digital business um, is not really completely DIY. It is, oh, you purchased this and I edit something for you, say an invitation, and then I send you the file. So that's not completely passive, okay, but it's a little bit more passive than 
me doing what I'm doing now, which is printing and shipping. Okay, but you have to, under, you have to the point of me telling you this is that obviously um, digital um, printable downloadable businesses are passive, but there's some that are more passive than others in it. And you might say, Daya, how do I decide which one I want to do if you're interested in doing it? You have to think about your ultimate goals. You know, if your ultimate goal is not to be stuck behind, you know, a desk 40 hours a week, then maybe you make it very DIY so the customers can, um, you know, take care of on their own. Okay. And just for the record, I should start out by saying this, no, in, no, um, passive income is really completely hundred percent passive. Okay. Because in the printable downloadable business, you have to put the hard work first. Okay. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, does anybody have a printable downloadable business here? If you do, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It, it takes, so the thing is, you might say, well, printable downloadable business is awesome because you're making a lot of money while you're sitting back, right? But that doesn't just come that easily because you're doing all the hard work in the beginning. It's not just creating the listings, posting, et cetera. It's marketing it, right? So whether you do SEO, SEO alone or SEO on Pinterest, email list, whatever you want to do, either way, there's a lot of hard work that still goes in it, but part of it is passive. Okay. <clears throat> so a lot of work up front and then a lot of cool passive things that happen later. The best part about it is even though it's not hundred percent passive, you still have to do the work, create new listings, etc. is that if you ever need to take a vacation, there's no, Oh, should I put my shop in critique, um, critique mode, uh, shop in vacation mode, you know, Oh, you know, to, you know, hurricane season's coming, you know, I can't print and ship today so on and so forth. When you have a printable download of a business, obviously completely, then you don't worry about that type of stuff. And again, you know, it's, if you decide it's right for you, it just depends on what your ultimate goals are. The reason why you're doing all this type of stuff, you know? Um, so just consider that. Um, what they added, I've done okay. It all adds up. Certainly, and Stacy and everybody else, printable downloadable business right now is, is fairly saturated on Etsy um, in general, maybe not in specific niche markets, but in general. Um, so it's hard to stand out of the crowd. Um, certainly, you want quality. That's that's definite. But it's also about quantity. The, the more listings you have, the higher chances you are to get found because you're using multiple keyword phrases. Um, and the odds of you getting found are much more likely, okay? Um, so it, it starts to add up. And, and if you have the strategy of doing a downloadable printable business, please don't, and you're like, I want to make money with it. I'm, I'm you know, Dio's right. I want more passive income. I want to at least make $2,000 in passive income a month, you know, with my downloadable printable business. Stop. That sounds great. But just understand that it's, one, again, it's not that easy. But two, when you have that, goal in mind, just know that, you know, having 10 printable items up is not going to get you there. Okay. Because of this type of market, especially if you're listing on Etsy, you can't list printable items on downloadable items on Amazon. Okay. If you have your own .com, you obviously have another, you know, thing you have to take care of, which is marketing it and getting traffic to it. Um, but if you have that down, that's fine. But either way, if you're pretty much on Etsy doing it, it's quite a competitive market. Okay. So <clears throat> yes, I'm back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nobody else mentioned it, Becca. So if you want to leave the Facebook Live and come back and see if that works, um, that would be awesome. Okay, so let, let's move on. Okay, so again, if you just joined me, I'm talking about four ways to make passive income in your handmade business. If you want to open another section in your shop that makes sense for your target customers regarding printable or downloadable items, that's awesome. Or a complete second shop. Again, it's not easy work in the beginning. It's, you know, it's, you can't put up 20, 30 listings and say, you know, where's the $2,000 a month that Dahlia promised me? I didn't promise you anything, by the way, but you have to really, like, really go after it. You know, the reason why, you know, imagine, Imagine right now I had a passive income business for pr printables and I'm making five, 6,000 a month. Okay. You don't make that much money by just easily putting up a shop together. Okay. You make that much money by doing a shit ton of work in the beginning. And when I say a shit ton, for those of you who have a printable download business that's actually successful, I'm not sure who's on this call right now. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So <clears throat> 
again, decide what kind of what kind of uh, digital business you want it to be, whether it's completely passive, the customer just takes it and prints it, or you actually have your hand in it, which is you maybe edit the file for them based on their customization, and then you send them the file. It just depends on your ultimate goal. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Again, still a little sick. Let's move on. Tip number two. Again, guys, anything, any of these tips nothing's completely 100% passive in this world. You still have to have your hand in it, okay? Um, even printable downloadable business. These people have to still answer combos for people. Um, you still have to put up new listings, you know, to keep up with trends, et cetera, and so forth in order for you to be relevant. So tip number two, it's the same vein, okay? Tip number two is hiring people, okay, to do that stuff for you, to print, ship, blah, blah, blah. So, you don't have to so so you could maybe work less okay so part of your um time it becomes passive now now right now i have people working for me they're outside i mean they're right here they're out, they're out there in the other room not outside and so i still have my hand in my business completely i'm not it's not very passive for me i manage them etc however next year next year no, not 2018. We were thinking about 2018. We're not sure if it's 2018 or 2019. We're going to go to Italy for about several weeks, okay, about 14 days or so. And my assistant, if she's still with us, um, will be running the business at this time. The point is, imagine if I want to travel often throughout the year, I would have her run the business. Now, this is a stretch for a lot of people. So I just want to throw it out there that I don't expect a lot of people to do this because it's a, it's a very tough thing. Most small business owners like us probably won't do it but the the extreme of this is hiring hiring people or hiring somebody so you don't have to work as much or at all you teach them the business they run it all you have to do potentially because it's still your business okay get in there five ten hours a week and you're done now this is a quite a quite a journey to get there if you're like i like that i like that i want to do that calm down it takes a journey to get there like right now if i didn't if i decided to take off work today I'm still going to make income. You guys know that. You guys know what I do. But even besides Handmade Mastermind, I'm still getting people to come through. I have a uh, SEO going. Like, I have a lot of things going on. <clears throat> but my assistant can run my business for me, technically speaking. I still have to have my hand in it, you know, because it's my business. But if I essentially said, you know what? Like, if my priorities changed, right? If I had to, and, uh, you know, I'm not saying anything bad, but, like, if my priority change and I needed to t step away from my business for let's say a few months, I technically can. Okay. Now I don't plan to do it permanently. So tip number two would not work for me. I don't think, I don't think I could ever let somebody take it over while I just hang back like a CEO, you know? Um, but if you ever were like, you know what? I want a business to run for me and I'm just chilling. Okay. You could train people to be you technically speaking. Okay, so right now, if I were to leave for a couple months, my assistant can run my business for me, give or take. I probably have to like up her training a little bit, but she can run the business for me. Um, again, I would probably have my hand in it a little bit, you know. Um, <clears throat> who wouldn't want to make passive income? It's a good point, Angela. I don't know. Um, and you'll see tip number four that I actually recommend it for everybody in some form or another. Okay, and the tip number four, if these three first three tips don't help you, tip number four is actually going to be something that you probably have to do. Okay, um, I've been thinking about opening a shop with downloadable. I just accepted to HOA. Do you think I'd be better folks on HOA or, or downloadables? I have 10 downloadable things already created. Carrie, you have to get on HOA. I don't know where you've been for the past mm, couple of weeks. Actually, I haven't, been, I haven't been on Facebook Live. Actually, I've been on Facebook Live Wednesday, but in general, I've been off for a while because I've been very sick. <clears throat> But it's, it's get on HOA, get on handmade to Amazon if people are wondering what HOA is, okay? Please, please. I'm not saying don't get do your downloadable items, but 10 downloadable listings is not going to do it. And I opened my, well, actually my shop is not a downloadable shop. Um, anyway, get on HOA. That's, that's my recommendation, okay? So tip number two, just in case you missed it, is hire people to take care of that stuff for you. So when I need to run, like literally almost... Today, I probably won't be able to because it looks a little gloomy outside, but I go out for my walks every day. I'm able to do that for the most part. So I'm able to do it because my team is running my business, okay? I want to do it because it makes me happy, keeps me fit, et cetera, et cetera. It clears my mind, et cetera. 
Okay. I built my business to a point where I'm able to do that. Now, when push comes to shove and we're really, really busy, I'm not able to go for my walks. That's, you know, understandable. But so while I'm not hundred percent passive, when I have my team with me, it makes a little bit more passive for me. I don't, I'm not, I don't have to rely on myself to do all the work. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, Bobby, that's not, Hey Bobby, how's it going? I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. Um, well, I probably haven't seen everybody in a while, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely not a, um, a passive, uh, business, but it looks like you want to be like a, not a supplier, but you want to be a vendor for small businesses. You know, that's probably a great topic to talk about in another Facebook live, technically a supplier. I love to talk about another Facebook live. Um, and, uh, and obviously give you some tips because that's, um, it's a different business model than our handmade business. Uh, absolutely. Cause it's not handmade, but technically in your case, it could be, you know? Um, okay. So tip number three, guys, I'm up to number three. I already did two of them talking about printable downloadables. And then we talked about hiring people to run your business for you. Again, that's an extreme. It doesn't have to be completely like that. So you could work much, much less. Um, tip number three is an interesting one not meant for any everybody okay and maybe not meant for a lot of people on this call it just it's up to you you know your strengths you know your weaknesses you know what you want for your business you know what you sell you know blah, 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 blah. you get it right okay tip number three is selling your expertise okay so if bobby makes jewelry okay i just made that up she might she might not and she's really good at teaching people how to make jewelry she could sell a digital class. Now you're more than welcome to do a class in person. My sister used to do soap making classes in person in Dubai when she lived overseas. It made her a killing. Okay. She would like to move it to the digital format, but it's, it's very, it's proven very hard for her only because she's so freaking busy. Okay. Nonetheless, selling your expertise in your trade is a way to make money if you know people are wanting want to know the way you make stuff either for personal reasons diy reasons or for their own business now that presents a problem because you're like i'm teaching people how to make stuff that i'm selling as well potentially okay um heck i do it every single day with handmade mastermind i teach you guys how to be on the top of the search engines and i'm fully 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 aware that when i'm searching for certain things to see where i fall on search i see a lot of my members hanging about hanging around next to me other stationary designers did I sell them the tools to help them compete with me? Yes. I'm very aware of that. That's why I charge the prices I do. And for other reasons as well, because it's awesome stuff. <clears throat> Nonetheless, if you are a soap maker, if you're a candle maker, and by the way, um, it, it, it becomes easier selling your expertise if you're very well versed in your expertise and, and then some, you know? So if you're a soap maker, that's cool. But if you're a soap and candle maker, and bath bomb maker that's cooler because it's within the same market okay um if you know how to use a program really really well photoshop in design what else do i know i know a lot of programs um i could sell that as well i'm not saying i am i'm just giving you an example um think about it for you i mean here's the thing guys it's not this tip is not for everybody okay and only because you may not be a teacher okay you may have first of all no interest in telling people how to make your type of stuff right um and you, you may, what the hell am I stepping on? Oh. You may not be a teacher. It is not easy to put a class together, okay? The work, for example, I sell classes to you guys. The work that's involved in planning a webinar, I call them webinar, they're pretty much courses. The work that goes into planning a webinar and not just planning it and, and then actually executing it, creating it, um, uh, recording it. Where's my notes? Oh, I cleaned them out recently. Guys, I mean, and the reason why it, it's so much involved for me, because you guys know, you see my webinars, they're legit, right? And that's what I would want for you if you sold your expertise, not to put some crap show together, but to really, because thoroughly put something together that people are going to be really impressed with high value, because when you sell this, you know, your expertise bundled the digital package, you want to make sure that you wow people. One, because it's, you know, great for word of mouth, telling other friends that, want that type of course, um, et cetera, and so forth. Now, if you're interested in doing this, obviously there's many tips and ways you could do it. And we're not going to go through it in detail here, but I will tell you that in order to actually be successful at it, because let's say you're like, you know, Daddy, I have no problem teaching people what I do. 
I'm really good at what I do. Um, and I think I could be a fairly good teacher. Here's a problem with that. You have to have a, a engaged audience that is interested in learning your craft. Okay. So, so what does that mean? If you example, again, if you're a jewelry designer and you're also about making jewelry, many multiple ways, etc., you have to hang out with jewelry. People are okay. So essentially I'm going to give you a couple of ideas. Um, just tonight, just so you could understand where I'm going with this, you know, belong to, jewelry seller Facebook groups. Okay. Um, go to your local, um, I'm trying to think of something local that, you know, it, potentially there are local groups that are interested in crafting, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> if you write blogs, right. Cause obviously if you're going to be a teacher and sell your craft, you probably should have some sort of you should probably still have some content out in the world, whether it be video, like I'm doing now, blog posts, blah, blah, blah. But the blog posts will obviously help because SEO, right? If people search for how to make jewelry, hopefully they find you. And, and so, so the point is find the engaged audience, whether they find you from search, um, either on YouTube or on um, your blog because of Google SEO, et cetera. SEO is one way. Um, another way is you going out and finding them, seeing where they're hanging out and hang out with them. Okay. And that's how eventually, I mean, you don't just say here a class, you provide value over time and then of course they could reach out to you. Um, I belong to a lot of stationary groups. I don't teach anything regarding stationary, but those stationary designers obviously have Etsy shops, Amazon shops. And without me even saying anything, sometimes they, they, they uh, you know, check out my profile and they see that I'm the handmade mastermind. There's a lot of members in our group today that found me, found me via stationary groups. Okay. And just by accident, I actually never marketed to them, but they just came to me. You know, um, yay, Ali, Ali's been accepted to handmade at Amazon. Love it. My tip to you, as soon as this calls over, get working. Okay. Um, so again, this third tip is not for everyone. Okay. Um, just really just understand this. I create classes myself for you guys. It is not easy. So I'm not going to lie here and say, oh my God, I'm making so much money. It's so, it's so great. It's great. Obviously I'm helping people right? I'm making money from it, um, et cetera, so forth. But it certainly isn't easy understanding. Well, you, you guys, I, I mean, I've had you, I've been doing this for like several years now. So I understand what you guys want and your needs, but it's also understanding people's needs and how they learn. And, you know, there's a lot more to it than just saying, Oh, I'm putting the class together. I talked to my sister through the process of creating a really, really good class. And and all this other stuff. And it's just, um, so it's, it's a lot of work and she's not ready for it yet only because she's so busy, not because she's scared of hard work. Okay. Um, I thought about this. Montana says mm -hmm. I sew and have people ask to buy my patterns. I'm hesitant because I don't want to have people sell the exact same item I make, you know, Montana, um, that's a good, fairly decent point. You may not even after today's Facebook live and that's fine. Um, but potentially doing other patterns that you don't sell potentially charging high enough dollar price that doesn't, you're not worried if they did compete with you and they take money from you. So for example, if you sold your pattern to Sally and Sally competes with you, you might be like, Oh, right. But if you sold it for a high enough dollar price, <clears throat> you wouldn't mind so much. You know, um, guys, there's a few reasons why my webinars are the prices they are. Most people tell you they're freaking worth it. So that's absolutely number one. The items, the stuff that you, t you learn in my webinars, SEO webinar, Amazon, um, description, target market, um, email list, all of them, they're legit, right? They are absolutely worth that money because you make that money back depending on what you're doing and how quickly you implement and how well you implement it fairly quickly. Um, so so that's that. It's worth it. But also to number two, the highest uh, priced webinar is, um, well, there's two of them. One of them is Amazon. And the reason why, again, jam packed, awesome stuff, because I don't, okay. I know that stationary designers are buying this. I've seen them. They're next to me in search. Knowing that I'm selling them this information. Why would I do that? Why would I have Sally over here, who's stationary designer, compete with me on the first page of Amazon. Why would I do that? Why would I teach her how to do it? Well, I'm charging her enough for my class that I'm okay with it. You know, I'm kind of okay with it. Point for Montana and everybody else. Um, you might feel comfortable at a certain price point to charge if you wish. 
Okay, if you wish. Okay, so guys, ready for tip number four? Now, if you listen to the first three tips and we're like, oh, I missed some things here. Oh no. Um, if you listen to the first three tips and we're like, yeah, these are cool, but I'm not sure if it's for me. I completely understand. I love that you don't jump to the first thing that sounds exciting. Love that because you're thinking it through. This fourth tip you kind of have to do because I've mentioned in previous Facebook lives, um, you know, again, I mentioned in the beginning of this Facebook live that there has to be something slightly passive about your business because if everything you're doing to make money, okay, in your business is super active, you're going to burn out. Even your employees are going to burn out. Okay. Does that make sense? So you have to have something passive and the tip number four is going to help you with that and open the light up in your brain to say, you know what, I have to do one of these things. And these things are probably being done already by some of you, some of you not so much, et cetera, and so forth. So tip number four is implementing, who's that? Oh, passive traffic strategies. Okay, let's talk about what those are. I wrote them down. First passive traffic strategy is of course, you know, I'm going to talk about it. SEO. Let me explain. <sighs> Not always is a super passive. Yes. Eventually on Etsy, for example, over time, you might have to change your keyword phrases, but in general you implement and then you leave alone and traffic keeps coming and money gets made from that. I'm literally doing at this moment, nothing. Well, not at this moment in general, I don't do anything to bring in Etsy sales, um, except for SEO. That's it. So how am I making money? How am I making money? Um, if I'm not doing anything because SEO people search for you, they find my listing and I get purchased, hopefully, right? Conversion rates, etc. So I, 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 if you're new to this group, if you're listening, hello, welcome. If you're new to life, if you're new to online business, if you are not new to this group, but you're like SEO, I think I'm okay, but not really. My traffic is, eh, do I really need to work on it? Yes. Yes. The first thing you must have in place. I, again, I beat this topic to death. I'm, I'm the queen of it. I, I love it. It's something that has, there's a few things that I can contribute to my success. SEO is one of them. There's no doubt about it. I put it, I optimize my listings on .com, on Etsy, on Amazon, you name it. And people find me when I'm sleeping. Okay. Literally where's my, where's my phone? Well, I don't want to show you customer information, but I mean, I mean, I was going to show you some sales, but, but you get the point. I make sales while I'm sleeping, right? Or make sales when I'm walking in, walking outside. The point is because people are finding me via SEO. Now this applies not just to Etsy SEO. Okay. Um, it applies to Google as well. You implement it. It takes a while to implement granted anything that's passive. The beginning part of working on it is usually much more harder. You know, you work on it and then eventually people start to find you right? It starts to build a snowball over time. And of course, Amazon SEO, same thing, SEO in general. Okay. It's passive because you implement it. And then technically speaking, you're just sitting back and you're making sales because people are finding you. That's a passive, um, traffic strategy in your business. Okay. If you're sitting there telling me that, no, I don't make money with SEO. I don't, um, get traffic that way. I get traffic by posting my links everywhere in Facebook groups and I post it on my social media and I post it spam, 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 spam. You have other issues. One, that's not really a really good strategy. Um, but even if it was effective strategy and you're getting sales from it, that's a lot of freaking work. Don't you want to sit, don't you want to go out for a walk once in a while and make sales when you're not working that hard? That's what I'm saying. You have to have some passive, you know, traffic strategies. So you're not always working, working, working to get that, those sales. Okay. So, um, SEO is number one. Number two is, is technically like SEO kind of, but there's more to it is, um, Pinterest. So Pinterest, people like to think it's, what the hell is my hair doing? It's like to think it's, um, uh, social media. It really isn't. It's not social. It's not social at all. Um, it's like a search engine. Okay. It's a picture search engine. But it's cooler than that because because it has a viral um, capability to it, and that's that's where I like that's what I really like about Pinterest. And there's ways to make Pinterest more passive than current people are using it, than ways people are using it currently. Um, but nonetheless, um, Pinterest is a way to make passive income because I pinned this 
okay, hold on. I pinned this one item, for example, and of course, let's just say, and then again, extreme example, it goes viral um, and it keeps getting me pinned and then everybody sees it and then I keep getting traffic from it. Guys, I mentioned in um, Instagram, I have, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do the Handmade Mastermind. On Instagram stories, I talked about how I was freaking excited because, and I, I'm always excited about this, but I was looking at my stats over from July till the last 30 days. And I've seen how much I've grown in Google uh, traffic and Pinterest traffic. And I know that. I know I'm growing in it. But it was nice to see the numbers. The point is, it's, it's, a, it's a snowball effect. And that's passive. I haven't worked on Pinterest in probably over a month now. Well, my, sister, my assistant does it for me. But the point is, I haven't done it. We set it. You know, again, it's my strategies that I use, which I'll teach you in 2018. And then I forget it. It becomes passive. Okay. Um, <clears throat> The last um, passive traffic strategy, and this, by the way, guys, is more than the ones I'm mentioning here, but the, another passive traffic strategy um, is automated email marketing. Email marketing in general is not very passive. You have to make campaigns. You have to make sure to send it. You have to send a follow-up emails. You have to... Blah, 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 blah. But if you do an automated email campaign... It, be, it can become passive in the future. When you're setting it up, it's not very passive. It takes a while to set up because um, you're preparing, like for me, I prepare a whole year, for the most part, a whole year's worth of emails. So you could probably bet it takes me a couple weeks, okay? Because I'm creating graphics. I'm thinking about what, you know, what's the best promotion that my, my customers loved last year and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Setting it, what happens is, um, you know, let's just say, let's just, well, we're about to end of the year. Let's just say today's January and I set my whole year up. I literally would be having emails going out automatically to my customers on my email list. Um, and mine set up to be once a month. And there's some follow-ups in there, but let's just say argument's sake, once a month. And I'm literally sitting back and, and as people join my list, they're getting automatic emails. I'm not doing anything anymore, you know? And there's some, you know, things I have to go in there and do because I realized, oh, this, I did this campaign in February and it wasn't so successful. Um, this type of discount was not really successful. I'm going to take it away because I have it in, let's say August. I'm going to change it up. So you might have to go in there once in a while to kind of peek at things. But when you're setting it up, it's, it takes a lot of work. And, but when you let it implement and do its thing, it's really amazing. Um, you know, there's a few different ways to make, there's a few different strategies to make your email campaign automatic um, based on the time of the year and based on when the person signs up. I have both working for me. So it's kind of like double trouble, which is amazing. Okay. And I love that because um, again, I I'm making my email marketing much more passive. Okay. The reason why tip number four is important for you is because again, this is Traffic, here's my items, here's, here's my items in my shop, okay? In order for this to sell, people have to see it. That's traffic, okay? If all your strategies to get traffic are, are active and not passive, or all, if all of them are active, that's a problem. You're working yourself to the bone, you're, that's not very smart. Some of your ways to get traffic should be passive, okay? Um, social media technically is not very passive. It can be just a little bit, depending on what you do. You could plan ahead of time and things like that. Um, but if you're doing everything active, it's not very smart. You have to get some SEO in place, right? You have to get some, um, well, in my opinion, email marketing in place, um, Pinterest. It's eventually over time. Let me see. That looks good. <clears throat> well, yeah. Thank you. Um, do you get me guys? All right. Ollie says, I can't wait for the Pinterest course. Me neither. It's going to be, it's going to blow your freaking minds. Okay. Sorry. Just, it is because I, well, it is because that's what I do, but also because it, it makes an automatic thing happen for your business. You know, right now, well, it has been for a while right now. I'm, I've not worked on Pinterest for a while and it's still doing its thing. I'm constantly getting notifications of repins, new follows, blah, 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 because of what I've done to it, my strategies. And by the way, I might even finish implementing my strategies because um, of the way I'm teaching this method, and I eventually will teach you guys, it is, um, you can't, 
depending on how many items you have and a few different things, it might take a while to implement. You'll see, you'll see. Um, <clears throat> Erica, once pins are popular, you can't change the pins out in the world where they land, but you could change your pin where it lands. But you don't know if the person going forward is repinning your pin or other pins. I'd <clears throat> love this question. I'd recommend if you have plans of getting your dot com up sooner than later, in my honest opinion, stop pinning people to your Etsy shop, okay? Stop pinning them to your dot com. All my, all my Pinterest strategies to my dot com. Okay, all of it. Told you guys in my um, Instagram stories, that day I did the Instagram story that had a Pinterest sale. I mean, I get Pinterest sales, um, <clears throat> excuse me, quite often. I get Google sales quite often. And it wouldn't have happened if I didn't implement those strategies. So answers Erica's question, please, Erica, you know, pin it to, the, pin it to your .com. Now, if somebody's out there like, oh, I have no plans for a .com, I'm kind of new to like, you know, selling online. I've been doing it for six months and I'm in over my head. I can't be getting a dot-com at this moment. Completely agree. Completely understand. Um, you can pin it to your Etsy. Money's money. Whether you pin it to Etsy or dot-com, money's money. But there's a viral thing that happens with it and I would like that to go to your dot-com. Okay, you worked hard for it. Why? To drive traffic to Etsy? Yes, eventually. If, you, if Etsy's all you have, it's all you want to have, that's cool. It's up to you. I wouldn't recommend it. But that's cool. It's up to you. More than welcome to do it. Okay. Um, but what, you know, what happens if Etsy shuts, shuts down your shop one day and you have all this traffic going to it, you know, these pens that don't exist anymore. What? You get the point, right? And there's a reason why guys, people, um, in the, um, several months ago were like, I asked people, what do you want to come out first? Pinterest webinar or Google SEO? And believe it or not, the, the votes swayed a little bit more to Pinterest. But the reason why I didn't do Pinterest first is because I wanted you guys to implement Google SEO first before pinning because if you pin first and then implemented Google SEO, you might, some of your pins may not be relevant anymore. And it's just a mess. I didn't want to do that to you. So I wanted you guys to do Google SEO first, since you're probably pinning to your website and you'd want to implement Google SEO strategies in the beginning, as opposed to going back and fixing it later. That's why I did Google SEO first. Okay. So Amy, 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 um, sorry, um, you're late, but we're about to actually wrap up. Um, I actually just finished going over the four passive strategies, income strategies for a handmade business. Let's quickly wrap this up and say what they are. One is printable and downloadable business. Okay. You could either open a second shop or if it makes sense within your own shop to have a section or two in it, that's fantastic. Just remember passive, uh, a passive download, but you know, printable business. It's a lot of hard work up front, a lot, a lot, a lot more items, quality, et cetera. And then you start to make the passive income later. So you might want to like, you might like, you know, when you're doing preparing for this, you know, new shop or whatever, feel like you want to like stab somebody because of how much work you have to do. And you haven't seen the fruits of your labor until you launch a product, but eventually it starts to pay off. <laughs> Bad example, but that's just, you get it. Um, two, hire people to help you take over over time, not completely take over. You, so it's your business. I never recommend you have your cans completely off of it. Okay. Um, but I recommend um, hiring people so then you could have le more like, well, first of all, I hire people to have more time to work on other things. So I'm not sitting back chilling. Right. But yeah, I'm able to go for my walk. Right. Because my team is working. So, it, you know, it's a little bit more passive, but the extreme of this is hire people. So all you have to do is like work five to 10 hours a week and you're done. Okay. But that's of course takes time. Again, tip number two is not for everybody. Probably not for most people. Tip number three is sell your expertise. If you are really good at soap making, if you're really good at, you know, jewelry making, whatever, package up into a digital class and market to people who want to make that type of product. Again, not an easy feat either. You can't just throw together a class and think, Oh, people are going to buy it waiting for you. Not necessarily. Okay. But it's still a way to be passive income because you know your craft. And of course, the last one I just mentioned, which you kind of have to do. And if you're listening to this saying, I don't have to do anything. Okay. And you give me like a roll of the eyes. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay. And everybody knows here. Usually when I talk about things on Facebook live and I want you to do it, I, I, I push you to do it. It is not a joke. Um, you know, I, I meet people almost every day that tell me that they only have an Etsy shop and, and they want to, you know, um, 
they wish they had more because you know it's a lot of pressure writing on it blah, blah blah and i'm like where have you been i've been telling you guys for such a long time to get other things happening for you and you know in this tip number four it's within your current business you know have passive traffic you know strategies email list marketing make it automatic seo okay excuse me <clears throat> pinterest etc i mean again there's a lot more there's a few more passive ways you could do uh to get traffic but those are a few different ways okay you have to implement one of these because if you if you we're actively working on getting traffic every day, which reminds me of those people that just post their links everywhere actively. And they literally post in the group and they say, I don't know what's wrong. Am I getting any sales or traffic? I post every day on my Facebook. I post every day on my Instagram. I post, 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 and am I getting anything? Well, first of all, you're working way too hard to get this traffic and nobody cares about you spamming your link everywhere. Even if, even for your followers, imagine you didn't spam it in places that people didn't care. Is this, it's not how it works. If it was that freaking easy, I'd have a freaking, I'd hire somebody full time, okay? 10 bucks an hour, 12 bucks an hour, and have them post my link all day long on social media. But I'm, I'm not doing that. Why? Because it doesn't work, okay, guys? So, um, Erica says perfect.com is in its baby phase. So I'll put both on my early 2018 plan. Please do so. Erica, if you don't have the Google SEO webinar, get your hands on it. So then you could implement Google SEO at the same time. So then eventually you're going to pin, right? But get that done. Get that out of the way. You know, you don't want to go back later and fix it because it could be a big, it's a, it's a big headache. Um, hey, Priscilla. Um, since I purchased the Etsy SEO and implemented it, my sales are higher than last year. Actually, last September and this month are in the best months ever on um, sales. Um, I love that. Grisella, Grisella, is that how you say your name? Grisella? I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, there's a lot of people experiencing highs and lows on Etsy and nothing to do with, um, well, some of them need better SEO. That's for sure. But part of it, if you have good, really good SEO because you implemented my strategies correctly, et cetera, experience the highs and lows. Sometimes people like that to jump to conclusions. And if you experience a low within the last week, it's not a good, it's not a good indicator that things are going wild but if it's for several months if it's for like the entire year compared to the entire last year it's definitely worth looking into i made multiple facebook lives about it please look back um you know also it's not a it's not a it's not a secret etsy is testing and sometimes it's in favor of some sellers Priscilla is one of them it hasn't she hasn't particularly been affected um and then some people some people are affected by it that's that's little you can control again i mentioned this in a previous facebook live but if you if you can't control those things there's other things you could work on that you could control why aren't you building your email list i mean why aren't you why haven't you built your dot com you know first of all again if etsy is testing some things but you don't have your seo in place correctly to begin with then why haven't you worked on you know seo to begin with then see if etsy wants to screw with you in your search placement you know what i'm saying um I mentioned it in the Facebook live that says that my Etsy shop has been down, but my reason was because I'm taking my repeat customers away from Etsy successfully to my .com. I think that's awesome. So I don't care if it's lower than last year because I'm successfully bringing a lot of traffic over. I know this because I asked them during checkout, how did you hear about me? And they tell me Etsy and some tell me other things, you know? So anyway, guys, what time is it? I hope you enjoyed today's Facebook live. I really wanted you to figure out um, out of these four, which one's right for you. I could imagine most people would want to do tip number four. It's just a smart thing to do, okay? Um, if any of you out there are considering tip number one, two, or three, let me know in the comments. I'm just interested to see what you guys have on your mind. You don't have to actually implement it. You might change your mind later. But I'd love to see if you would like to do tip number one, two, or three, potentially. Um, and if not, if you like tip number four, which one are you working on now? Tip number four was um, passive um, traffic strategies. Are you going to work on email, automated email marketing? Are you going to eventually work on Pinterest? Are you going to work on SEO in some form or another, either Google, Etsy, or um, Amazon? Which one are you working on on tip number four? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys also communicate what you want to do um, to hold yourself accountable. Just kind of, you know, write it out there in the world, send it out in the world. So we understand, Hey, you know, Sally's gonna be working on this. Um, you know, John's gonna be working on this, etc. 
Hey, Emma, what was tip number one, please? I missed the beginning. Tip number one was a printable and downloadable business. Now, again, it's not for everybody. Not every tip is for everybody. But if um, you feel like you want to open a second shop for a printable, downloadable business, or expand your current shop if it makes sense within your target market, you could do so. Um, but I mentioned before um, in the beginning of this Facebook Live, which obviously you missed, but um, that it's not easy work. Not, none of these. Anything that's passive is not easy because passive sounds like awesome, right? I wish I could just legit 100% make passive income the rest of my life. Just like chill back, right? But you do all the hard work in the beginning. And that's what downloadable printable businesses are. You do all the hard work in the beginning, and you're making passive income later, okay? Um, so that was in a nutshell, it was tip number one. Again, tip number one was downloadable printable business. Tip number two was hiring people. Okay. So you could step back a little bit more, right? Um, ooh. my coffee cup is sweating. Anyway, um, tip number three is selling your expertise and tip number four, my favorite, which is a must is passive traffic strategies. Okay. You're welcome, Emma. Mm. Very fitting my coffee mug. Let me know in the comments guys, before I let you go, I want to know what is it that you're thinking of doing from these four tips? Okay. Um, because <clears throat> it's smart, it's smart to have some active income great um, and then smart to have passive as well that's why people think i'm getting everything done and making like a million bucks i don't make a million bucks but i make a lot of money because i have a lot of passive things going on and some active things but a lot of passive and eventually over time i take things and i make them passive let me see can you move the p away just like one a second yeah why is it so dark out there? Oh, cause of light. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I'm not hearing from most people. So I guess everybody's like silent today. I don't know why. And what's my hair doing today? I didn't do anything with it. Obviously it's like a curly mess. Stacy says downloadable art already doing it. Passive traffic working on it. Perfect. Okay, good. Now, of course, I think I mentioned today is not, not going to be like overnight, right? You're not going to all of a sudden create it. And then all of a sudden, like be rolling in the dough. It's not just not how it works. You know, I would love another passive income, you know, stream. I would love it, you know, in, including um, printable downloadables. But the work that goes, that goes, the work that it involves to get it set up successfully. Like, I know exactly what it takes to be a successful Etsy shop. Like, I could legit shut down all my shops right now and start again, and I'll still be successful at it. It's just what I do. It just takes a lot of freaking work. And I already have a lot of work on our plate, you know? Um, so I just got to execute properly before if I, if I plan to do it, you know, but I wouldn't mind another passive income stream, you know, um, <coughs> <coughs> Hey Renee, I love the idea of downloadable printable business. Do you think it's better to add something like that to your current shop? If you were selling physical products, as opposed to just opening up another one that is purely digital. Fantastic question. Here's what I want you to think about. If you say to yourself, I'm going to open a printable downloadable business um, or have some items, what are those items? Are they printable and I'm making something up really quick, printable invitations people could download? If so, do you find that in the future it will expand into other things within the invitation paper goods market? If so, having a separate shop is probably potentially ideal, but the flip side, and again, it's up to you to decide, is... Having within your own shop, you know, Etsy gives you now a lot more shop sections is really good because you have a lot of customers coming your way anyway, okay? Um, com coming your way to your Etsy shop already. So that's super helpful because, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're, you built a name for yourself. And I easily created a second shop and was able to build my name for myself fairly easy, you know, fairly quickly. Um, so I'm not saying it's not possible, but there's a lot of hard work. And... Again, guys, I'm, I'm very proud to say this. I don't care if I sound arrogant. I could literally right now build a new shop and make it a freaking rock star. It's just what I do. And it just takes a lot of work. And I um, personally, depending on how many shop sections you think you may need, et cetera, 
um, and that's the only sucky part. Like you have to kind of plan around that. I'd probably do it within my current shop because I already have, you know, traffic going there. However, if you want to build this whole printable like domain and printable kingdom, then maybe a sec second shop would be ideal. Okay. Um, Emma, I think I might like to try the blogs and videos if I've never done any before. I make hand stamped jewelry, so thinking about giving tutorials. Interesting. Again, it's a very, be careful with that, Emma, because it's not just, oh, let me give tutorials and, and maybe sell them in the future. It's be very strategic about what you do. And th that doesn't mean if you're not strategic yet, so if you're like, I don't know what I'm doing yet, I, 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 I encourage you to still give it a try. I'm not trying to prevent you from doing this in case you get your strategy perfect. No, never going to be perfect. But just know that the strategies behind selling classes and um, doing all that stuff, but doing videos and stuff can get your feet wet and see how you like it. You know, um, it certainly is. And that helps you could, could help you gain a following, et cetera, and so forth. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I have to get going a lot of work to do. I will, well, today's Friday. So hope you enjoy your weekend. Um, I want to, I mentioned, I forgot to mention this. I came up to mention this in the beginning of this uh, Facebook live, something freaking awesome is coming very, very soon. If you have been a member of my group for a little over a year, you probably know what it is. If you have not, I encourage you to start paying attention over the next month to two months and, and going forward, of course. Um, but just in case you don't want to miss it, the link is above. Join my email list. Okay. It gives you access to a free resource library as well when you do join. So that's awesome. But join my email list because then you don't, I'm going to be sending something very soon that you absolutely don't want to miss out on. <clears throat> for those of you who have been a member for over a year of my group, know exactly what's coming up, or you may have forgotten. I don't know. You're welcome, Renee. You're welcome, Emma. Um, but I encourage you to sign up. You won't regret it. Okay. Um, I can't give you any more. I can't give you any more like not tips. Um, I can't reveal any more as until it gets closer to that time. And I will reveal more as it gets closer to that time. But joining my email list will, uh, will um, ensure that you don't miss out on what's happening. And, and it's, it's going to be freaking awesome. It's just, I'm just going to say that. Um, and you'll probably see hints dropped about it in my Instagram story. So if you follow me on Instagram, check out my Instagram stories over time. You start to see hints dropped. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me, the handmade mastermind and eventually catch my stories every day and you'll see the hints that I'm dropping again, freaking awesome stuff happening in a month to two months, a little bit less than that. Anybody here? that remembers, and don't say it, remembers what I did last year, a little over a year ago. Anybody remember? Sorry, my hair is like, I didn't straighten it. I had no time. I was busy yesterday. You name it. Um, Stacy, so intrigued. Stacy, I feel like you were here last year. And, and it's possible that some people forgot what it was. Um, but it was a very huge thing I did. Um, yeah, Stacy remembers. Okay. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people do remember. <clears throat> so um, anyway, I'll let you guys go. I'll leave you with that. Make sure you join my email so you don't miss out. And have a fantastic weekend, guys. And I will, I will see you Monday. Okay, I'm back to my normal schedule, which again, if you're new around here, I um, do Facebook Live five days a week. Monday through Friday, with the exception of once in a while, I have to go to a doctor appointment, you know, you know, this, that, but other than that, I'm here five days a week. Okay. I just was sick for the past, you know, weekish. Okay. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye.